Hi guys, welcome to another tutorial on esoteric tech. It's been a while since my last video. I've been pretty busy with work and some other things, but I'm back and we're going to continue with this series on data structures and algorithms. In today's video, we're going to be discussing two very popular data structures, which are stacks and queues. We will discuss what a stack is, what a queue is, how do they work? Why would you use them? And then we'll of course go over how to create them in code. Uh, before I get started, as always, if you find this video to be educational or helpful, please do subscribe. Those subscriptions are the responses that I need to let me know that this video is providing help and that it's actually useful in helping you achieve your goals as a developer. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing we'll do is start off discussing a stack. A stack is an ordered data structure that follows the last in first out principle. And in Go, it can best be illustrated using a slice. And the most important part of that definition right there is that it is last in, first out. And I'll show you an illustration of what that means. When we're talking about stacks, whenever you add an element to a stack, that is known as a push. And whenever you remove an element, that is known as a pop. So an element is pushed onto the stack using the append function in Go. And you can see here, they're each added kind of in the vertical stack. And then when you want to remove an element, you could actually use the slice operation. And as I said, it's last in, first out. So that last element that got added is the first one that gets removed. And all of them get removed kind of in that same order. So that should be pretty easy and simple to understand. And I think you'll find that to be the case with a queue as well. Uh, neither of these algorithms are, or I'm sorry, these data structures are complex, but both of them have a wide variety of use cases, which is why it's so important to actually know them and know how to implement them. So what are the use cases for a stack? Well, one use case is probably something that you use very often. And that is this button right here, this back browser button. So I'm sure you know this, but every time you hit that back button, it pretty much goes to the last page that you were on and you can keep hitting that and it will just kind of keep on reversing going in that order. And so you can imagine that last in first out principle is being applied here. They're capturing, you know, your actions in a, in memory. Uh, well, it gets evaluated in that same way, that same pattern. Another uh, tool that you might be using pretty often is the control Z function. Again, this operates in the same manner where it's kind of undoing your most recent action and working its way from there. So these are just two use cases, but as I said, there are many. And so I encourage you to kind of do some research and find out the other areas where this would apply. Now let's move on to a queue. So a queue is an ordered data structure that follows the first in first out principle. And this can be illustrated in a couple of ways. It can actually be illustrated using a slice or a linked list. So with a queue, an element is inserted into the queue. And with go, we use the append function. And then when you want to remove an element, you're essentially slicing off the first element that was added to the queue or the list. So again, that's pretty easy to follow. So when we talk about the use cases for a queue, you want to think of any application that kind of operates in a first come first serve type behavior. So you can think of maybe a digital waiting room or maybe a call center where individuals call in and their calls are placed in the queue and then they're answered by the operators in the same order that they were received. Another use case for a queue could be when a popular item starts selling online. So you can think of maybe a new pair of Jordans or maybe a nice new pair of Crocs. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not judging. Uh, true story. Post Malone was selling Crocs and they sold out. But uh, you can think of in those situations where so many people are hitting the buy button as soon as they go on sale, a lot of times you have to enter into a queue in order for your purchase to actually be handled. Another use case would be 
uh, the events and messages that occur in an operating system or on a cloud platform. So when you think of platforms like AWS or Azure, a lot of times if you've got resources on their platforms, you're communicating via events and your resources are receiving those events in a queue. And that's kind of the order in, what's, in which they're handling them. And so, uh, like I said, I encourage you to do some research, find out the other use cases. And that's, that's the goal of this whole data structures and algorithms series, as I've mentioned before, it's about expanding your tools. That is about supplying you with these common algorithms and structures to handle all sorts of different issues and challenges that you might come across in programming. So let's hop over to the code and I'll show you guys how to do this in, in Golang. All right, so the first data structure I'll show you guys how to code is a stack. And as I said, with a stack, you can actually use a slice to illustrate that. And that's just what we'll do. This particular stack is gonna hold a collection of strings. Uh, and so I'm creating a new type uh, that is of slice string. And the first function that I'm gonna create is gonna be one that checks to see if the stack has any values in it. And this is probably not a function that you absolutely have to have, but uh, a lot of times with linear data structures, uh, you'll often find that there's some type of method implemented to check and see if the structure actually has any values in it. And so I'm gonna go ahead and do that uh, just for the sake of not having to repeat code, which is the whole purpose of functions, right? So uh, the next function I'm gonna create is gonna be the uh, push function. As I mentioned, a push means that you are adding items onto the stack. And so we're gonna call this push and it's gonna accept a string. And you may have noticed within this receiver method, I'm actually passing in a pointer to the stack. And the reason I'm doing that is because if we're adding elements into the stack, we may need to change the capacity and the length. And we want that to be reflected when we return from the method. And so we're passing in a pointer uh, in case we have to reallocate that. Uh, but in this function, all we're gonna do is basically append a value, the passed in value onto uh, the stack. And so we're going to dereference that and pin that string. And that's it, it's pretty much as simple as that. That is our push function. Uh, the next function is just a little bit more complex, but not much. I think you'll find with both of these uh, structures, the coding and the concept, neither of them are that complicated. Uh, so again, passing in a pointer, and then this is our pop function, which means we're removing elements from it. And for this, it's gonna return a string in a Boolean. It's gonna return the string that you remove. And it's gonna return a Boolean of true or false based on whether or not uh, the stack was actually empty. So if you try to remove something and the stack was empty, then it will return false. If it actually does remove something, then it will return true. So the first thing we're gonna do is check and see if our stack is actually empty. Right, and so the function is is empty, and so we call that. And if it is empty, then we return an empty string, comma false. And then, if that is not the case, we'll have an else statement here. What we'll do is first get the index of the last element in the list, right? So this is gonna be the last one that was added. So do index is equal to, and this, I can, I'm gonna do this in three separate steps actually, just so you can see clearly what I'm doing. So the first thing we're gonna do is get the index of the top most element, right? So this is gonna be the length of the stack minus one. So that's gonna be that top most, the last one that was added. And then what we wanna do is actually capture that value in a variable because we're gonna return that from this function. So all we're doing here is grabbing that value and storing it. And then we're actually gonna remove it by slicing it off. And so all we're gonna do is basically create a slice of all the elements 
up to but not including that element that we want to remove right and so to do that we can use oops we can use this notation right here so we've got the colon index so we're basically saying from the beginning all the way up to but not including the index right and then so that's we've created a new slice or basically eliminated that element from the slice and they're going to return the new element and we're going to return true as well because we did pop a value from the stack and that is our pop function and that's pretty much it we've got push we've got pop we've got our function to check and see if it's empty so we can now go ahead and actually test this out so i'll go ahead and create my main function here and i want to create a actual instance of this stack so this is going to be a stack of type stack and then i'm just going to push some values onto this stack so let's push data structures uh, and then i'm going to add another one stack.push and algorithms all right and then after that all i'm going to do is actually pop off all of the values right so i'm going to do while length of stack is greater than zero and you know what we've got that function up there so why don't i do while stack is empty all right so that's pretty much the same thing let me actually call that function there and then we're going to return two values from this pop method stack.pop and we're going to say if y is true which means we actually did pop a value or remove a value then we're going to go ahead and print the actual value uh, that we removed and so we are pushing all of these values onto the stack and then we're removing them one by one until the stack is empty uh, and printing out each value that we remove so let's run that and you can see here that it prints those out in the reverse order that we added them so algorithms was the last one that we added so it's the first one that gets removed and then and and then data structures so that should be hopefully that's pretty simple to understand um, if you have any questions certainly let me know in the comments uh, but now I'll go ahead and move on to showing you guys how to create a queue. And you know what? Rather than rewrite all of this code, uh, this would be a good way to actually show you how closely related the logic is for both of these data structures. So what I'll just do is just change some of these names to a queue. And actually, some of these functions are actually going to be pretty much the exact same. So this function that checks if it's empty is going to be the same and then as i mentioned with stack you've got the push and pop functions but with q you've got nq and then you've got dq All right and so you've got that change there let me just change these and then what we will do this so this here is actually where the logic is going to differ slightly so we already know that with a queue you're always removing the first element right so it's always going to be the first one that was added to the list and so in our case it's actually always going to be uh, zero right that's always going to be the one so we actually don't even need that and then what we'll do is all we want to do is remove everything or we want to keep everything all the way to the end all right so we're capturing the first one that was added to the list and then we're going to keep everything that was added to the end and return that and let me just change these names here
Yeah, and then I will go ahead and actually go ahead and change these plus functions to NQ. And this one, DQ, is going to be And I think that about does it, right? So what we should see here is actually uh, kind of the reverse. So with before we added each of these and then we kind of popped them off in this order, algorithms and, and then data structures. Now we should see that they are printed out in the reverse order. Yeah, and that's what we get. So that is the difference between a stack and queue. As we said earlier, stack is last in, first out. Q is first in, first out. And then really quickly, I'll just show you an alternative way to uh, create a Q as well. One way is with a slice, which I've showed you here. The other way is with a linked list. And honestly, the main point of me showing you this is really just to show you that the logic actually for a Q uh, it's actually already exists in the built-in libraries uh, with Go. So I can actually, I'm going to delete all of this stuff. You don't need it. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and create a queue. And this is going to be a type list.new. So it comes from the container slash list library. And all we're going to do is just change these functions to push back. Right. So push back, push back, push back. And then what we'll just do is actually, uh, I'm going to put print out the value. So we'll do that and then we will actually remove it. Move up, remove front. All right. And let me, I said I was going to print it out here. Print line front. And what I'll do is actually uh, do that for each one. All right, so now I can run this here. And you see we get the same result. So like I said, uh, you can use this library as well. Uh, but it's just it's still good to know kind of the internals of how a stack and a queue work so uh hopefully this all made sense to you guys if you have any questions please put them in the comments as i mentioned earlier please like and subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next video here on esoteric tech thanks and see you later bye